Welcome to what is officially the last session of the day. Uh, and let me start off by apologizing. The session was supposed to be at 3.30. It shifted to 3.50. I don't know what happened. Something happened. Uh, so I stand between you and drinks with my good friend John. So we'll, uh, we'll make this meaningful, hopefully um, engaging, and you'll get some value out of it. Um, here's, here's the deal. We're going to cover a little bit about uh, this fast-moving space, ESG. We're going to take a very specific data lens. We'll share some of our perspectives. Um, we'll do some quick intros here a second. Um, and we'll try to get through some content. There aren't a lot of slides, but it's more about teeing up a conversation. Um, there's so much we could talk about when it comes to ESG. We'll sort of narrow it in to data and the value that Appian can add in helping you all as you're navigating this, this dynamic environment. Um, as we get started, why don't, I'll kick it off. Uh, Mike Hefner, I lead Appian's uh, solution and industry go-to-market efforts. That means I walk, work with all of you uh, on, your, on your success in industry and with solutions as well. John? Thanks, Mike. Uh, I'm John Trapani. I am on the industry lead team focusing on financial services. I am fairly new to Appian, having come from a 20 plus year career at Fitch Ratings, where among other things, I was a very happy Appian customer. So I, my, my opinions are informed by having used this platform in anger, so. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's funny. Um, all right, so uh, uh, other confession here is uh, who you were expecting to see in my spot uh, is Herbert Schilt. Uh, who's uh, uh, unfortunately could not get out of Europe and join us. Uh, he is recovering well, though, so we wish him all the best. Uh, I'll try my best to stand in. The only thing I can say is I am German, so you get some of that, uh, but it won't be quite as good as if Herbert were to do it. So let's talk about some of the things we want to we wanna cover here, and I'll do some level setting from my perspective. You know, this whole idea of of ethical investing isn't new. You know, my background is capital markets. I've spent the better part of two decades driving change in capital markets. Ethical investing has been a topic, not a hot topic, but it's been a topic for a long time. So what's changed, right? What's different now? Well, you could point to a number of things. Maybe you could point to 2015, the UN, United Nations, established their sustainable, uh, sustainability development goals. Maybe, I mean, that, that had an impact, but that was, that was you know, seven years ago. So what's different now? Why is the last session of Appian World, day one, why do we have 30 people in the audience? Why, pe why do people care about ESG? I think people care about ESG because people, the light bulb is starting to go off. It's, a, it's an important topic, it's a very positive topic, and no matter where you are, um, in the broader scope of your, uh, your perspectives on ESG. Uh, it's here, it's coming, the change is real. And the driver for the change, the reason it now matters, is the street cares about it. Wall Street cares about it. Uh, and, it and Wall Street cares about it in the dimension of risk. Uh, risk has now filtered into the evaluation criteria of investment decisions um, that are driven by optimizing investment returns for the public markets, for individuals, for all you and I, and that's what is really breaking the dam on ESG, and that's why you're seeing all this momentum. Um, Fast-moving, changing environment, that's an understatement, right? Uh, the rules are being written and rewritten as we go along. Um, the, what data can you trust? What are the standards? What are the definitions? There is no rule book. Yet, the regulators are driving to regulate, full stop. They're establishing reporting requirements. They're establishing mandates. It's coming. It's here. Europe is further ahead. U.S. is right behind. Uh, ESG is not going away. Part of the problem uh, and that's the topic we're sort of narrowing in on, is the data sprawl. Data's everywhere, and, and you really have to figure out 
what's my dashboard going to look like? How am I going to manage uh, against the ESG mandates just from a corporate decision-making perspective, and what data can I trust? Can, can Appian create a compelling dashboard of important, meaningful information? Of course we can. Can we help you with your reporting challenge and the oversight in the reporting? Of course we can, especially the, the folks in the room that are customers, they know that, right? But, but it's really this data sprawl, this, this what do you trust, what do you not trust? How do you develop an operating motion for the now when you already know it's going to change? You already know the standards are continuing to morph and evolve. So it's a very dynamic space, and all of the typical challenges that make Appian a great answer exist and are magnified in this space, process, manual, you know, heavy oversight. Um, we know monitoring reporting is coming. That's the baseline. Um, um, so we'll cover some of that. Um, we're going to try to keep this to the intended time. Uh, we're not going to keep you from drinks. But we're, we're, we want to make this an interactive discussion. So we'll leave some time at the end, and there will be some roaming, uh, roving mics as well. So just to give you a sense of how we think about this, I'm going to build all of these. So if you take a um, financial services scan, uh, although ESG is relevant way beyond financial services, um, but you think about the typical three lines of defense, right? Um, we've identified, and this is just a snippet of where we can go with ESG, a number of different domains in the first, second, and third line that are all highly relevant to the topic of ESG, right? So what are we doing about it? Um, we're focusing on making ESG available in our solution suites. We, we just launched KYC. It's not quite ready yet, but the filter of ESG is going to eventually be in, in KYC. We're already talking about including it in our government acquisition management uh, solution as well. We're going to take the effort to make sure that when we build a solution and ESG is a relevant filtering criteria, we will make it available and we will stay up, up to date with it as the underlying uh, uh, standards change. Um, very exciting though, some of our partners and you know, some of the, uh, the, the, the solutions are actually on view in the partner forum and I would encourage you to go check them out. Some of our partners are already building solutions around the ESG space. I'll name just a couple uh, around new business and deal lifecycle management. There's some interesting solutions. Check them out. They're in, they're in the pavilion. Um, I'll call out Exibio uh, also. They have built a horizontal solution targeted at the CFO suite, the leadership suite, that really takes a lifecycle view of ESG. So they're, they are in the midst of all this. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a good looking solution. I, I would definitely encourage you all to check it out. But it's the, it's the ingestion of data, it's the dashboarding, it's the uh, understanding the trade-offs and decision making uh, against these evolving standards uh, and then being able to create organizational control and preferences and embed that into the application all the way through reporting. So there are things that are coming, they're developing, this is a hot space. Uh, check out Exibia, check out some of the other, other partners that have built solutions. We're committed to building ESG into our solutions going forward as well. So let's, let's sort of focus a bit more narrowly on data and John's going to cover that. Sure. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Can you, you want me to build this? Yeah, just yeah. thank you. Uh, before I talk about the picture we're looking at, I, I do want to raise one point that, uh, that Mike was just describing, which is ESG is likely not something where companies can hire a chief carbon officer and make a department out of it and be done. It's going to be a play a role in a lot of how our businesses operate. So all of those columns we saw and all the different functions within, we believe ESG is going to have an impact on almost all of that. Uh, and what we're looking at here on this page is really an illustration of one of Appian's greatest strengths. So we have something we call low-code data. It's the ability to use records to build a comprehensive, task-appropriate view of the data that lives in your organization. And also, I would point out in the case of ESG, data you will likely consume from third-party sources. Put that together in a view that you can use across your Appian applications. 
So most of you have probably heard the expression, if you have data in two places, it's wrong in both of them. With Appian, you don't have to worry about that because you can leave the data where it sits. You can leave the data in its underlying systems, underlying repositories, craft a view that is complete, tailored, and fit for purpose without having to migrate any of the data out from where it currently sits and without affecting any of the upstream processes that are handling its ingestion and, and cleansing life, uh, life cycle. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah. Sorry, just, thank you. So the other strength of Appian is clearly that we are a largely visual uh, development environment. And so what we're looking at here is one of the tools that you would use to compose these rich records. Uh, this is a top-down view of, I think it's a customer record we're actually looking at here. And each of those nodes is another data source that you're pulling in and using to compose this rich view of what a customer is. Now, think about, Mike was describing how what you're going to do for ESG is going to change. And it's going to evolve and change a lot over the next few years. Having records is a good way to insulate you from the amount of change that's coming your way. Because if you create these records and you use them in 6, 10, 15 different Appian applications, where you have changes that you need to, uh, need to introduce into the records, maybe there are new data points that you, that you need to review. Maybe the underlying source has changed and you need to make an update. You're not making that change across 15 applications. You're not changing 15 lines of SQL code or store procedures. You're making that change once in this configuration platform. So that when you add new attributes to your ESG universe of records, they are automatically flowing through to your applications. And for more than just ESG, we think that the way Appian helps you handle data is really a strong competitive advantage for us. Yeah, and I, I love the fact that you can do it in a visual, contextual way. Right, because that's how we work as human beings. We want to see the spider web, the interconnected nature. That's also that's a good point. And you know what? I have my notes, and I didn't bring them. Uh, <laughs> one of the things I noticed as a customer of Appian was the SMEs who worked on my on my delivery were better able to understand what the delivery teams were building, because they were able to look at process models and these data models, and agree before we were delivering things that the team was on the right track. And there's value to having these pictures play a role, these visual tools play a role in the, in the development life cycle. And that's something on a, on a few projects I've, I've experienced personally. Perfect. Next, next slide. slide, please. So this, frankly, is a laundry list of things we think Appian is great at. We could spend two hours talking about them, but we won't. Uh, but I will highlight two that I think are, are, are interesting. One, so flexibility. We've, we've talked a lot about how we, we know ESG is coming. We also know it's going to change which makes it like every other thing that you guys build and support is that it's always changing. Appian is very, resistant, uh, very resilient in the face of change because it is easy to change, very fast to, to prototype, uh, and cost effective. So I don't have the facts at my disposal, the numbers, but I know that the, over the life cycle of most systems, the majority of the money is spent in maintenance over the long term. And if you can find a way to shrink the amount of time and energy you're spending doing that, that's a win. And Appian is one of the ways you can help to do that. Uh, so in areas where you know change is coming, Appian is probably a good, a good choice. The other thing is, is, I'll call out as process mining. So process mining is kind of new to the suite, and I don't know if you saw any of the, 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 uh, the keynotes this morning. You know, for areas where you are about to embark on building a process, or maybe you have some nascent manual processes already in place, Process mining is probably an excellent way for you to get a real window into how these processes are unfolding so that sooner than later you can begin making good implementation decisions. Where do I optimize? What belongs in Appian? Where, what are the opportunities to automate some of this behavior? And over time, as what you're doing with ESG is starting to impact more and more of your, of your operations, process mining is a good way to maintain uh, a set of SLAs. So you can define what is my ideal process. Process mining will then start monitoring how your processes are living in real time and start alerting you when things are falling out of, your, out of, out of compliance. So I think process mining is actually going to be a, a good strategy to apply to the ESG problem going forward. That's perfect. That's excellent. Um, we wanted to switch gears. And there's so much to talk about when it comes to ESG. Uh, we wanted to take some questions from the audience and maybe even get a discussion going. Uh, the hallmark of Appian World has always been the, the dialogue, uh, more so than the PowerPoints. 
So with that said, we have a roaming mic. If people have uh, questions or comments or want to share their own observations, uh, we'd love to hear. Thank you. Do you mind waiting for the mic? Hello, can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I um, can't see you, but I can hi. hear you. Hi, I'm like, thank yeah. you guys so much for this. Um, so how is everyone starting to think about the new SEC regulation um, that was just released here in the US and just, you know, kind of what, what are companies starting to do around, around that if you guys have any experience yet? Yeah, um, do you want to take this? Sure. Yeah. So uh, as Mike mentioned, you know, the states are a little, a little bit behind where, where Euro, Euro is. Uh, on, on uh, the scope one and two regulations, which I think is largely the focus of what the SEC was looking at. Uh, I don't know how customers are responding to it today. I do know that there has been an increase in trying to quantify the amount of scope one and two emissions. Uh, and that's part of what we think will have an impact across different lines of business. So it, it clearly plays a role in things like funds that are you know, based on, 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 on green, uh, green bonds. Uh, just an aside, one of the last projects I did before I came to Appian was an ESG rating platform using Appian uh, for actual, actual uh, for sustainable finance. That will likely also have an impact on uh, the procurement function at organizations, where they have to begin getting, you know, what is my scope two obligation from this supplier that I'm using, and getting them to attest and supply you with data. Uh, I think it's going to be evolving. It's going to be evolving. I see a lot of opportunity on the government side, the federal government side in the U.S., starting to take that lens. And that's why I think there's such a great opportunity for us to embed ESG filters into our government acquisition management suite. Um, um, because we know the criteria is coming. So the criteria is going to be at the, what are you actually doing? Uh, but then also on the reporting side of things. I know there was uh, another one right there. I think. I yes. Hi. <laughs> um, quick question. So I think one of the things our clients struggle with quite a bit is the ingestion and normalization of so many disparate ESG sources and kind of linking that to the same underlying issue, security issue, or et cetera, et cetera. So I guess one of the things you, you mentioned um, on one of the pages was around integration to third party sources, this, that, and the other. So how has Appian thought about solving that problem, because I think as managers are trying to get their arms around this, yeah. um, the, the first step is how do we ingest this and link this all and, and kind of normalize it a bit for consumption to be able to do anything with that information. So I'm just curious if you've had any of those use cases come up or thought about that a little bit. So I, I mean, I'll, I, I pulled the slide up for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> so so uh, I've used records extensively in non-ESG space. Uh, so. I would hesitate to say that they can solve for literally everything, because some problems are going to be bigger than you want to put inside a record. You're going to want a model that gives you more than one record, that, is, that each of which are task appropriate, but also sharing the same underlying data. I don't know that there's a one-size-fits-all. You could have a 20,000-column record in Appian is going to make life easy for you. Uh, but records as a concept work, work well, uh, and they prevent you from having to migrate that data, so they're, they're a win on those kind of fronts, too. Uh, the answer is really use case specific, though. And you know, there are people who are certainly better with the technology than I, and that's a, that's a long list, uh, who could probably advise you very specifically based on your needs. But generally, you want to try to design the records so that they are appropriate for the universe of processes you're going to build around them. And that typically means they're not a million miles wide. They're typically narrower than that, but pretty deep. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I can't. I can't see half the audience. So somebody has a yeah, it's blinding. An arm open. Someone over here too. An arm up. Okay. Cool. How's oh, that, Josh Seaman? He doesn't get the mic. That's <laughs> right. So with the with the regulations not being set and clear, right? So they're not yet defined. They're kind of moving from Europe over. Is there a risk for organizations to start building? I mean, I, I, for one, you see an ESG job posting every other posting right now. Yeah. 
And so there's clearly a build of teams happening within organizations. Is there enough clarity for organizations to even start thinking about where to pull data? Yeah. Um, whatever the technology is. I guess it's more of a view about the regulations coming and the stability of those regulations before you start to build. I don't think you can wait. I don't think you can afford to wait to get started because the regulators are getting serious. But it's not just the regulators, it's the comment I made earlier, which is Wall Street cares. Wall Street's now embedding ESG risk profiling into how they evaluate the health of their investment portfolio. The decisions that they make about where to place their resource, one of the filters, I'm not ever suggesting it's the only filter, but it's now a criteria that's made it into the risk realm, and therefore you can't really, I mean, you could, you could afford to wait, but if I'm, if I'm a CFO and I go out to one of the, there's now a plethora of, of evaluation agencies that are out there that are scoring firms based on the information that's publicly available, and I want to leave it to that process to profile my firm, maybe, depends on what the scoring is, right? I'd rather be in control over setting the prioritization, the destiny, the reporting, whether it's an SEC mandate or not, to profile my firm. Maybe, maybe Matt, but yeah. Is, is there a risk that companies have to Say it again, I can hear it. Of course there is, of course there is. But I would, I, would, I would propose that some of the things that you need to do around the life cycle, right? So the establishing the protocols for uh, um, ingesting the data, evaluating the data, uh, making some decisions around what the standards should be for your company, and then holding yourself accountable to making those decisions monitoring against those decisions and then reporting on them, that process is probably gonna not change as much as the data requirements and the data sources and data standard. So I think you can get started with the process and then continue to evolve based on the, the emerging standard. Yeah, you, what's your thought? One thing I would add to this is, everyone remembers Y2K, hopefully, which the industry knew was coming 20 years before they decided to do anything about it. So there's a tendency to backload these kind of efforts and just wait till the last possible minute and then, all right, everybody hire a million people and get it done. Uh, that played out in SOX compliance, which went from you know, nothing to all of a sudden everyone has to, and that was largely an audit kind of problem, not a, not a technology problem. But the same thing played out with SOX, the same thing played out with Dodd-Frank, uh, which you know, on a personal level at Fitch impacted me quite a bit. And it was the same story. It was, we knew it was coming. The lawyers had gone through and figured out what the impact was. And then we waited till the absolute last possible second to do anything about it. ESG might be a chance to get ahead of the curve a little bit. And one thing I'd add to the pressure, you know, it, yes, Wall Street cares about it now. But customers care also. Customers care. Consumers care. Right. Investors care absolutely so about it. There's a lot of external pressure to okay. do this right. And there's another factor here that, that needs to be mentioned. I think you have to be authentic because you're gonna get called on it, because there's zealots that will call you on it. Like, I could stand up here right now and say, and one is in the room, uh, I could say right now, Mike Hefner Enterprises, I am going to be zero carbon in the next two years. I can make that claim, right? What does it mean? Does it mean anything? Does it mean anything, right? I think what's happening is there is so much passion there's so much energy around the space. It's not gonna go away. The regulators care. The, all of the stakeholders you just mentioned care. I particularly am interested in Wall Street and the risk profiling. Um, all of that together, you better, you better have a plan, you better have a program, and you have a way of actually achieving that target or uh, you're gonna get publicly chastised as is happening already. Um, it's a dynamic space, and I can tell you some of the largest consultancies in the world are establishing sustain sustainability practices and are doubling down, because everybody's trying to figure out what should the 
what should the guidepost be, right? Appian, I think, is in a unique position because we're built for change, we're built for speed. Appian is a unique position to get you into the game, to get you to dashboard, to get you to visibility, but then also be able to recognize that it's okay for everything to change because we're actually built for change. And that's why we were so passionate. Somebody actually decided to cancel the session because Herbert couldn't come, and we were both, there is no way we're canceling the session because people need to hear that we think we have a puzzle piece to the ESG answer, and you should, you should think about it in those terms. There's a lot more that goes into it, right? Yeah. yeah. I hope that helped to answer it. Wait, wait for the mic. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so when we build these solutions in ESG, yeah. um, do, I mean, right now the data sources look pretty clean. You have a SQL Server, Salesforce, Oracle, like you can pull in easily. But do you need to do any type of data massaging there? And if you do, then do I need to use Appian in conjunction with another tool? So many of you will already have best in breed data, data management platforms. Continue to use them. They're great. Yeah. Uh, where you don't and where you have spot needs, maybe there's a new feed you're ingesting and there is a, going to be a, 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 a stewardship workflow that you maybe don't have a license to use your existing tool or you want something very simple, quick and dirty, Appian's a great answer for that also. But Appian is sort of agnostic about whether or not you're using your best in management data platforms and data management tools. It's totally fine to do that. All right, thank you. What we would suggest is when the CFO is freaking out and, and says, I have no idea what my, my ESG position is or even any insight into, into what reality is, and they're screaming for a dashboard, don't let them build it in Java because anything you build, and you'll have to rebuild immediately, right? Because everything's changing. Build it on a platform that's built for change, okay? And with that, I'm, we're gonna drop the mic and enjoy the rest of your conference. Thank you, guys.